maybe this will help you understand a little bit more how somebody can become an avoidant that didn't come from childhood. Every sex act you can imagine. Y'all, in this video, I want to talk about the differences between being an avoidant and just being a super masculine woman. There are avoidants out here who are women. Not all avoidants are men. I know men get a bad rep of being uh, non-committers. Uh, avoidants are only men. That is so not true. There are a lot of women who suffer from having an avoidant attachment style, me being one of them. But because I also coach women who are super hyper masculine, because whether you are a divorcee, a single mom, a leader in corporate America, you are leading in your home. These are masculine women who have no idea how to exude or use their feminine energy or feminine power. There's similarities and traits between the two. And I know that because I suffer from both. I suffer from having an avoidant attachment style. I suffer from being this super duper masculine woman. So I want to talk about in this video how I came to be in both situations, right? And maybe this will help you understand a little bit more how somebody can become an avoidant that didn't come from childhood and maybe how somebody could become so masculine in her energy that she has no idea how to even get back to the feminine side. And I will also say it is highly possible if you do have an avoidant attachment style, go towards being secure in your attachment style. It does take work and I'm a living testament to that. I am not a therapist. I am not a psychiatrist. I'm just here to help you better understand yourself because these are things that I've had to work on. And I'm going to tell you the truth. These are things that I have to constantly work on. And you can ask my current partner that and he'll tell you the damn same. First, let's talk about the similarities between uh, a woman who has an avoidant attachment style versus a woman who just might be really living in her masculine energy. Now, here are the facts and the similarities. Both are very independent. Independent queen, yes. Didn't Beyonce do a whole song about that? But also, if you have known an avoidant or if you've dated an avoidant, you know that they are also very independent. They like their space. They like to be on their own as well as a masculine woman. Now, they both fear vulnerability. A masculine woman, yeah, she lives in her masculine energy so much that, y'all, being vulnerable is being feminine. I see a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about embracing your feminine energy. Let me just tell you, for the woman who is doing it all and has been doing it all, the mature woman, the woman who's been divorced, the woman who's been through trauma, the woman who has developed such a severe case of masculine energy, it is not that easy to just put on a dress, put on some makeup and go find your feminine energy, girl. Go take some yoga, do some stretches and love on yourself. It's not that easy at all for us. Now, we already know in avoidant, they fear rejection. They fear opening up because of the fear of rejection. See, both fear being vulnerable for different reasons, though. Another similarity between the two is they only rely on themselves. They don't want to be let down. So an independent woman, yes, it's going to take a lot for her to ask for some help. Yes, it will. Just as somebody who's an avoidant woman, she's not going to want to rely on anybody because of the core of her fears rejection. Fear is being let down. So therefore her asking for help ain't coming. It ain't coming. And I'm going to tell you, a masculine woman, she ain't asking for help either. Both an avoidant and a masculine woman might find it difficult in being intimate in relationships because in order to be intimate, y'all, that takes vulnerability. And I'm not talking about having sex. Anybody can have sex. I'm not talking about that. And just for the record, because my kids watch this, my sons watch this. I've only had sex three times and each time have produced a child. Each one of them, I have three sons, but they fear being emotionally intimate in relationships. Again, going back to the fear of rejection, going back to the fear of being hurt, going back to the fear of somebody else letting you down. I might as well do it myself. Another huge similarity between an avoidant woman or man and a masculine woman is they both need their personal space. They need time to themselves. Both of them do. Now, why am I talking about this topic? Because again, I'm coaching both of you. I'm coaching the avoidant woman. I'm coaching the very masculine woman. But another reason why I'm talking about this, y'all, I don't see a lot of people talking about this. And I don't see a lot of people coming from having this experience of being extremely masculine and having an avoidant attachment style. So I thought I'd share some insight because I want you to get inside the brain of someone who might have both, who might be dealing with an avoidant attachment style. I want you to understand more so 
about what we may go through. Now, I am more so secure now, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you a lie that sometimes I don't suffer from some triggers. But I want to get into how I became an avoidant because I saw a couple of comments on my video, my last video about being an avoidant, how to thrive with an avoidant, y'all, that they only come from childhood. And I'm sitting here telling you that's not true. Avoid attachment style can absolutely come from some type of trauma or loss of trust in your lifetime, not in your childhood, because I had a great childhood. My, like I said before, my parents were still happily married. As I am a grandmother to two, my mommy and daddy, yes, I said my mommy and daddy are very much so supportive and in my corner. So my avoidant attachment style never came from my childhood. When I got married, I had a secure attachment. What happened, V, to cause you to clam up, close up, fear intimacy? A loss of trust can absolutely trigger your attachment style to change. Mine wasn't just cheating. Mine was like next level cheating. Uh, the person who cheated on me was at our wedding. I invited her into my home. It was his so-called best friend. I had no idea, like I was so upset with myself when I found out. I could do a whole video on how I found out y'all because it could literally be a lifetime movie. I, no bullshit, it could be a lifetime movie. But once I committed to finding out because something was telling me in my spirit that something wasn't right, it just in that one day, it hit me just like that. I found out everything, but it wasn't just the act of cheating. The thing that shook me to my core, honestly, was that it all went under my nose. They took vacations together and I was married. Bought her expensive gifts, but he was very cheap with me. This was somebody who attended my wedding. This was somebody I had in my home. And I think the worst part of it was, and I would never wish this on anybody, was when I found out he was cheating, I had the fortunate incident of reading blow by blow what they did to each other because they documented it in emails. I don't know why they did that. My dad was like, he's got to be the most ignorant fool. But when I did break into his email, yes, I did. I read things that nobody should read. They documented everything, everything, every sex act you can imagine. They wrote it in slow motion, how she did this, how he did that, and all the way up to the wet spot in the sheets and him getting a plan B. From that, and then my sister at the time was battling cancer. That caused me to shut down and I never got help for it. I never went to therapy. I probably should have gone to therapy and I was completely traumatized. I had thought about all of the, the narcissism I had dealt with. And again, I didn't know it was narcissism. You can watch one of my previous videos. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I wasn't crazy, but he constantly made me feel like I was crazy. I, the last video I did about being gaslighted, all of these traumas just triggered in me somebody who shut down and I shut down hard to the point to where my sister, who was still alive back then, she told me herself, she said, uh, I'm starting to feel sorry for him, my ex-husband, because I had turned into a major bitch. I became very hateful. I came, I became very spiteful. Um, I wasn't, but I wasn't doing anything as in like trying to get revenge. I wasn't doing any of that. I just became a cold hearted person and I shut down any and all intimacy that came my way. This major loss of trust that I had in, and I think the hardest part about it was honestly was I could not believe I didn't see any of it. Like if, if you've ever had the unfortunate incident of catching your partner cheating, it's not just the fact that they cheated. It was also for me, how did I miss it? I didn't trust myself anymore. I didn't trust my judgment. I damn sure didn't trust him. Either way, going through that caused me to withdraw from anything that had to do with any type of love. Fast forward a couple of years, then enters my masculine era. Now I'm getting super masculine. My sister ended up passing away a, a few years later. I had her youngest son. So I became a single mom now, now to three sons and my nephew. So I, I was sitting here raising four boys. There's no way in the world that you're not going to become super masculine when you're raising young men. And then you times that by one, two, three, four for me. 
I became the queen of masculine energy. All boys were in sports, football, basketball, baseball, and wrestling. I was constantly at games. And then I was flying around because my oldest son played division one football. I'm traveling. I'm, I'm, I'm raising four boys. My schedule becomes so jam-packed with practice and games every weekend. And I'm constantly in my do, 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 do. And not only that, leader in technology in corporate America. But when you're leading your home and you're leading your career and you're the breadwinner and you're doing everything all the time from the moment you wake up to the moment you close your eyes and go to sleep, there's no way that you know how to find your, your feminine energy again because you're too far down into your masculinity. You can't find it no damn more. That's the woman I coach because that woman struggles to find love. Because a lot of us masculine women, we want to be with masculine men. But y'all, we too busy being a man because we don't know how to be the woman anymore. I started working with a professional many years after this. Again, I should have been working with the professional right after that incident happened, but I didn't. I allowed it to permeate my soul and it changed me to my core. It changed me into a different person. So here I was going back into the dating scene, being very masculine and now having an avoidant attachment style that I didn't even know I had. I then started dating and it was a shipwreck. <laughs> Y'all, it was a damn shipwreck. I'm, yeah, I, yeah, it was uh, terrible, but it wasn't terrible to the men. Let me just say that. I don't think they really knew that I had all these engine lights going off. So now that I shared about how I got all messed up and like I said, I did eventually get help. And if that is you and you need help and support in either releasing your masculine energy and or going from avoidant to maybe managing your avoidant or even your anxious attachment style a little bit better so that you can attract a healthy relationship. Y'all, please reach out to me. My contact information is listed below. Set up a discovery call and we could talk about it. All right, y'all, let's go into the key differences between a masculine woman and an avoidant woman. Okay, because there are some key differences. The one huge difference is how they view their independence. A masculine woman who, let's say a masculine woman who has a secure attachment style, she views her independence as a source of strength. It's a source of strength. She's able to be alone as to recharge herself. She's able to just be in her own essence and she's able to communicate that. I just need it. I'm going to go on over here. Independence to somebody who's avoiding is a defense mechanism. It's to keep people at bay. I'm going to go on over here to keep you from getting close to me. I fear intimacy. Independence is a way for to me to keep you away. Whereas somebody who's very masculine in her energy, somebody who loves that independence, right? A masculine woman uses that as her strength. That's a superpower. But an avoidant woman, it's her defense mechanism. Big, big difference between the two. Another big difference between a masculine woman, the secure attachment style, okay? She's not a masculine woman who's also an avoidant like me. I'm trying to explain the differences between an avoidant woman and a masculine woman. Another big difference is how they approach relationships. A masculine woman, if you don't think she don't know how to be assertive, trust and believe, she has to assert her dick everywhere she go. Like my book is titled, Ladies Leave Your Dick at Home. A masculine woman absolutely knows how to communicate to you to say, you know what? I'm interested in a relationship. I'm not interested in a relationship. They have no problem with communicating. They might communicate a little too well sometimes because they don't know how to lean back and shut up sometimes uh, and not lead with their masculine energy. But one thing they don't have a problem with is being direct. How an avoidant who approaches a relationship, they may do the opposite. You might see some self-sabotaging. You might see them exhibiting behaviors that will unintentionally push you away because what at the root of them they fear rejection they fear intimacy so if things are getting a little too close they may unintentionally push you away because it's their defense mechanism a masculine woman has no problem with sharing her emotions especially masculine again a masculine woman who has a secure attachment style we all know that at the root of an in any type of insecure attachment style the root of both of them our fear. And somebody on my the video left a beautiful comment and I loved how she worded it. If avoidance could only just realize that they are missing out on true love because of their fear. And my comment to her is 
And I want everyone to understand if you're dealing with an avoidant, they don't see it as fear, y'all. They see it as protection. I'm protecting myself. I'm protecting myself from the big bad wolf. I'm protecting myself from getting hurt and being rejected because I've been down that road before. I've been hurt. I've been traumatized. And I don't like that feeling. And I will never go back to feeling like that ever, ever, ever again. I must armor up myself to protect myself from ever being in that situation again. But we know at the root of it is fear. If you are dealing with an insecure attachment style, I want you to please understand you can become secure. It does take work. You have to work on your emotional regulation. Regulating one's emotions is key. And I can sit here and tell you that I've had to work on this a lot and I still do. I still do work on this. You can heal yourself back to being secure, or if you've never been secure, you can heal, heal yourself to being secure. But again, it takes work and it takes the desire to be in a healthy, long lasting relationship. There are plenty of avoidance out here who are in relationships, who are in long standing relationships. Do not sit here and believe for a second that avoidance are all single, anxious people are all single, and the only people together are securely attached people. Now, the likelihood of relationships lasting longer together are two securely attached people. And then who's more so single, the anxious and the avoidant? And then they find each other and then they stress each other the hell out. And that's why if you are anxiously attached, and you're dating somebody who has an avoidant attachment style, it is absolutely imperative. One of you, if not both of you, need to be working towards secure. I go over that in another video. By all means, I will link those videos down below. And in the description below, y'all, I have an actual freebie, just a complete freebie video essay. And I explain clearly the top five tips when I work with my clients, the top five tips that are keeping these masculine women single. I hope this video was helpful in helping you identify the differences and the similarities between an avoidant woman and a masculine woman. Y'all, till next time, y'all take care of yourselves.